Let me show you guys a couple of pictures, all of you out there, that will help you. We go back, we began a new era in uh, uh, at 2020, the year 5780. Uh, the thing with Hebrew, Hebrew's numbers have sound and meaning, and you can get a lot more from it. Uh, and this was from the beginning of when he gave Torah to us. And so with that, uh, and the word of God, which we so uh, envelop and cherish. So 80 means a new beginning for testimony, a new era, a historical time. That started in 2020. Now go back and look at what happened. I mean, 2020, God, God shut us all down. And in the midst of this crazy, politicized, uh, uh, governmental COVID stuff we're going through, we still, it was still God shutting us down to get us moving into a new era and moving in new ways. We get to, 90, to 81, and remember, I remember coming with you, with both of you and showing this picture for us. And really, as we enter one, which we're still in, but now we're starting to cross over into the revelation of the next year. That's what Feast of Tabernacles is about. We won't really hit our stride to probably April. And that's what timing, that's why understanding timing helps so much. But 5781, a leaf of this new era, meant that we were returning to restoring God's covenant plan for our life. Mm -hmm. so, so notice we moved into a new era. God shut us down. We started moving toward this whole past year has been about restoring. One is linked with restoring the parent root, restoring oh. the covenant root. Therefore, now as we enter two, two is about a house. And it's about in the midst of this restoration, now we move from the restored root producing fruit into starting to build the house for the future. And all along, the lion of the tribe of Judah is leading us. He's leading us in war. He's leading us in triumph. He's leading us in building. See, those are all apostolic dimensions of him. And we have now entered into setting the pillars for the house for the future. One last thing before you guys start uh, uh, imparting to us is, see, in Matthew 16, when uh, the Lord uh, had all of his disciples up at Caesarea Philippi, you couldn't get any darker than Caesarea Philippi. It was where Pan came from, pandemic. Uh, it was where the God of Pan was worshipped. And uh, Daniel and Amber, you know, of course, have been there uh, several times. And when he went there, all of a sudden, Peter breaks through when he asked him, uh, who, who are people saying I am? And then he finally asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? And Peter breaks through and he says, uh, you're the Messiah, the Meshach, the one, the anointed one, the one we've been watching for right there in the midst of that dark area, God breaks through. And then the Lord prophesies to him. And he says, upon this rock, I will build my church. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I'll give you keys to unlock the kingdom. Well, we've been going through the process of unlocking God's kingdom plan in the earth. Now we start building again for our future this year. Two is linked with the house. And mm -hmm. so I don't even think we, I think God pulled us out of a church understanding to get us to rebuild the church for the future. I call it a storehouse for the future mm -hmm. because he shifted us to thinking harvest in a new way. It's interesting that you would say one represents the house because many prophets are hearing, including myself, that this is the time to build the family altar. This is the time that God is calling families to pray. That God wants to restore family systems and things that are broken. Maybe in your life, as you know, as you're listening, you have a broken family, you have broken relationships. 
Well, the good news is that God wants to restore. God wants to do new things. But, you know, uh, I mean, because covenant begins with family, really. Do you want to share on that at all? Let, let, let me show you that book Alamo and I wrote. It, it's really key for us to uh, see that that was why last year we wrote that book for us, that we would re rekindle the altar fire. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And because we've got to, uh, Sh Sh uh, Cheryl Sachs wrote the book on the family altar. Right. And uh, it's because to build, which we just crossed over into, see, every year elapsed. We think time linear, and we're really going in a circle where we're causing what we've been in to elapse and keep preserving progressing as we move through this whole new era this era that the year that this era is linked with to build means to add sons and daughters too wow. and i've watched with my own family i've watched every one of them coming back to the lord seeking the lord moving back toward the lord everything god said about them that uh, you get weary waiting for all of a sudden started to happen Wow. And uh, it's amazing to watch that if you are staying faithful in seeking him. And I do, uh, you know, we're here in the earth realm. God's not in time. We're in time. But he has predetermined our time and place. So if we start seeking him, like Cindy said, on restoring the altar in our life and the altar in our home, all of a sudden, we're going to see our home harvesting in a new way. We're going to see the church coming into the uh, harvest in a new way. Yeah, I think that's a really exciting. Um, one thing uh, uh, that Chuck mentioned was a friend of ours, Cheryl Sachs uh, from Arizona. God gave her a word years ago and that revival would come to America, and let me say, the nations, the earth, when the family altar was restored. That starts this year, people. I, I, well, I know well. you've been working on it, but there's a manifestation of it that starts coming this year, where we actually start wow. seeing it. Joshua and, uh, first of all, Caleb, Caleb, he was so, had, the Bible says they had different spirits. Mm -hmm. uh, see, uh, you know, I, I think that's the key for us right now. We want our spirit vibrant. And we're in this era that is also linked with Holy Spirit. And uh, we have to allow Holy Spirit to work with us in a way that we have not allowed him in the past to do. Mm -hmm. It is so key for us to know Holy Spirit again, to be baptized in Holy Spirit again. And uh, I'm just watching how the Lord is doing that. And uh, let me say one more thing about this year, because y'all are so instrumental in my life in this. See, two is linked with uh, surrounding and closing. And we're called to surround our inheritance. Now, remember the first book that uh, Cindy wrote was Possessing the Gates of the Enemy. And then the first book that I wrote, uh, and I, I owe so much of it to you guys, is called Possessing Your Inheritance, because mm -hmm. we all have a portion. I had a portion that got shifted out of God's plan. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when God put y'all in my life, um, I watched you help me understand how to shift that portion back. Mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. all that God had because he had spoken to me what, when he visited me when I was 18 I want to restore what you've lost mm -hmm. and I will restore all that you've lost well you know all of you listening out there you have to go through a process to get that you have to go through aligning properly uh, I remember uh, this with Mike and Cindy they came to do a big meeting here in Denton and uh, we went out to dinner with leaders afterwards, and I was sitting next to Cindy, and she just looked at me and said, you're going to come to work with us. You're, <laughs> you're going to, you're going, and Mike looked at her and said, we don't even know who this guy is. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but 
when that process began, and I knew I needed to submit immediately, see? I knew I needed to adjust my schedule to do that. I knew God had put me with, with whom I was supposed to be with. And um, when I started that process, Cindy said something, because Mike and Cindy and I, for all of you listening, once a week, we would meet and pray all day about all sorts of, we'd pray for nations, we'd pray for our nation, we would do whatever, we'd hear what the, the Lord was saying to us, and Cindy looked at me, and they did something that was so important in my life, they bought me, the Lord told Cindy and Mike to buy me a, a leather jacket, well, I'd never worn a leather jacket, my dad always had these fancy leather jackets, these fancy suede jackets, and when she didn't even know that when she gave it to me, she said, you're going to restore everything your dad lost mm. and all he was meant to be. Well, I knew all of what he had gotten into and all that he had done. And the Lord said, you wear that jacket and oh. you restore that mantle that he lost that he should oh. have had. Now, oh, that's yeah. what this looks like.